Broadcasting from the great city of Anchorage, Alaska, in the largest state in the country. This is the Upper One Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Eric. Here we are, brother. It's episode four of the Upper One Podcast. What do you got to say? Yeah, we in number four, brother. Wow, you got that macho man down. Oh, I can, you know. Rhonda's got me going on the spring cleaning, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, you got well, me. In, you were talking all yeah, that wrestling hey, thing. Got me uh, pumped up hey. on the macho uh, man. So- oh. Oh, my man. Was, was, was Macho Man your favorite wrestler? Oh, I, I don't Macho you're... Man was the man. I you're, loved Macho you're, Man. You're I did. Not, you're not as big a wrestling fan as I am, you know? No. Nope. Hulk Hogan is my guy. Did you know before Macho Man was a wrestler, about, about the time he started wrestling, he was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals? Yes, I knew that he was a baseball player and uh, was uh, actually a pretty decent baseball player. Yeah, he, and, he, uh, played, he played... For the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds, and then also Tampa Bay had a team called the Tampa Tarpons. Oh yeah, that's my hometown, brother. Yeah, as a right-handed, he got hurt in his shoulder, and he ended up having to learn how to throw to left. That must have been tough. I'm yeah, sorry. I, 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 I broke I, my I broke my hand. Imagine one. doing anything with my left hand. I mean, I can swing a hammer left-handed a little bit, but in the third grade, I broke my right arm, and I ended up having to write as a left. Handed and it was tough. So. I couldn't imagine trying to do anything left-handed. Like I said, I can swing a hammer just because that's what I've done my whole life. I've been able to figure out how to swing a hammer left-handed you, if I have to. You know, I don't want to, but uh, if I have to, I can. Springtime in Alaska, there's a song by Johnny Horton. Springtime in Alaska and it's 40 below. Thank it's, God we're not 40 below yeah, up no, here. I, uh, uh, we're driving 40 in, above. Driving in it was 37 degrees we just got a little snow you know after being warm for so long i i I was excited because you know we we touched on that last episode but we're doing spring cleaning yeah has your wife got you working too uh she tries (laughs) she tries my wife has got me working hard i say tries because my garage is full and i cannot get it cleaned out because i don't have a shed built big enough to put some of this stuff in whoa 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 whoa. i didn't know we were gonna this was gonna turn over to me (laughs) well you're the carpenter you're supposed to be helping me i will when i've been Um, waiting two years has it been that long uh, maybe um, i brought it up several no, times in the last uh, yes, year but uh, yes i know i need to go over and help you build a shed and uh anyhow we're gonna do that man i swear man as soon as i can <laughs> Did so, yeah, that buy me some time? I know you love wrestling. Did that buy me some time there? No. <laughs> You're not gaining points. <laughs> I was trying. I figured I'd try. Well, anyhow, yeah. I, I mean, I've got I've got a list of honeydews that, you know, especially with what's going on now, I probably could be doing. But, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard when you got somebody else living in the house. I'm not mentioning names, but you got somebody else living in the house and you come in and see some of the mess that they make and it just deflates the air out of your sails. You should shouldn't talk about your wife like that. I'm not talking about my wife. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe I need to shut up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I do have I do have a whole lot of stuff that I could be doing. And, and as soon as you can help me, Mr. Carpenter, we're going to build me a decent sized shed. And you're going to like where I'm going because there's not going to be just storage in this shed. To- I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to make this happen as soon as social distancing ends. Thank you. There you go. Hey, but, but, all right. I like the but, way I think. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, don't threaten me with a good time. Like I said, you're going to like it because the shed's not going to be used just for storage. No. There's a little stuff that you and I might be doing out in the shed. Oh, for making the hand sanitizer, right? Very there good. There you go. We're going right. to make some I, hand sanitizer I like in that. our shed. Uh, yeah, and it's about time. Do I need some more hand sanitizer? I've, I've got... I've wink, got, wink. I've got some ideas. <laughs> I've got some ideas. We're, we're going we're gonna to play with some hand sanitizer. Other than that, I mean, what do you got going for spring cleaning? I don't know, man. The wife's got me cleaning carpets and... 
wait, wait, trying wait, to clean wait. the garage and everything else. And I'm sitting Why there thinking, you... hey, I tried telling her. I said, hey, I'm doing all the spring cleaning I can do. I said, I'm even polishing off the liquor bottles. That's the best spring cleaning there is, right? There. <laughs> That's what I tried to tell her. But some reason she frowned on I'm, it. I think I'm going to have to use that. I, 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 well, she frowned on yeah. it. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 baby, I'm polishing off the liquor bottles. Come on. Are, are you are you dusting them off or are you polishing them off? I'm polishing these suckers yeah. off. Okay, that's why you need the hand sanitizer. I'll tell you what, they so clean, can't even see them anymore when I'm done. I don't know where to go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> This is the time in Alaska where springtime means a whole lot of things. It means breakup. It means I'm going to go buy a gallon of Simple Green because that's what I use to knock the dirt off of the first initial car wash. You know, after things settle down. I use that to clean up the engine on my snow machine. (laughs) This is not an ad for Simple Green. It's just stuff that we use to take care of, you know, clean it. Just part of that spring cleaning yep. ingredient. I, I, I do have a lot of stuff. Once the snow goes away and I, I don't need my four-wheeler in the garage anymore, it's going to come out, so there'll be some space there. But, uh, yeah, we're. I mean, I'm kind of doing thinking about spring cleaning. Yeah, it sucks, man. So, I, I, I just... You know what's bad about the spring cleaning? When the snow melts? You got to clean up the dog do The backyard. Oh, my well, Lord. Well, hey, we got kids almost they're a few years away, but we got almost teenagers. They need to start learning how to do chores around the house. That's that's a good thing for the kids to do. Mama won't let my daughter go out there and touch it. Put some, put some in, in England they call rubbers, put some damn rain boots on. She should be used to nitro gloves by this time, you'd think, <laughs> you know, with all the self Hell, well, distancing we could even, we're doing and we, wearing gloves. We could hey, even make her a mask. She don't need to. That's right. We can make her a mask. Exactly. Go out there, clean that up. (laughs) But no, that's the worst thing that I hate about spring up here is, man, you got to get caught up on the dog. Well, here, I'll trade you. You can come. Nope, 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 nope. You can come clean my yard and I'll clean your yard because it's easier cleaning that shit off of grass than it is off of D1. Nope, nope. They ain't trading. I think it's D1. Well, on D1, man, I just have the hose out and just... It doesn't work that way in my backyard. Oh, I got a pressure washer. Well, then you're going to... Wash it out. You're going to push all the D1 out. Well, well, I don't hey, even think it's D1. I think it's I think is it's Is your backyard chips. clean? Is your backyard clean? No. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. I'll take a pressure washer to D1, but I don't want to blow my grass out out back. You can turn the pressure down. Well... Sitting there thinking about this, uh, this whole social distancing thing. And I've been thinking about these dating sites. People meet people online and then they talk to each other and then they want to go out and meet somewhere. What are they doing right now? They I can't don't... go anywhere. There's no restaurants, no bars. You you can't go out to a public area and meet. Well, now you got to meet one-on-one. In I, a, I gotta a say, private you know, area. I just celebrated my four-year anniversary, so I haven't even thought about about dating but that is a very good subject you know it was just something that the wife was talking to us about and i was sitting there thinking wow well that is something that is it's going to change a whole lot because back before all this happened you never know what you were going to get you never know you always tried to be safe you'd meet at public places where things were going on you know especially when you're meeting somebody new from the internet but at the same time the internet and all of our technology today has taken away from traditional dating so you know so we, we you got a whole lot of what ifs but it's going still on. you got to meet the person you got to know exactly them. i mean i know they got the tv shows married in 60 days or whatever 90 90 day fiance 90 day fiance Say, that's, whatever that's one know. the wife watches too but i mean you sit there and you, i mean and i understand these dating sites they try to weed out the weirdos but you know now it's hard to figure out am i meeting a weirdo in a spot that i'm one-on-one with them you know and who knows if you know this guy might be a freak well, I'm yeah, sorry. That's, that's where i, I was getting at is do it that's that's where i was getting at is usually especially with today's technology usually you don't 
don't know. We talked a little bit about the 90 Day Fiance. One of the other shows my wife watches is Sister Wives. Oh my and, God, yeah, that guy. Is... I'm not. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. What I'm going there with is. Can because... I say one thing? Let me say one thing. I'm sorry. I have one wife. She runs me ragged. Who the hell would want five? Holy smoke! Four, well, five, whatever it was. I don't. I don't know what the uh, show is, but and, and I agree. I just with you. know that he has a bunch of different wives, and I'm sitting there thinking, hell, I got one, and I'm I'm, I'm done at the end well, of the day. Here, here's here's I'm here's, ready to go to bed. Here's something that I got to say, and that this reality TV because that's what that is. That that show is a reality TV show. We could talk about that in another subject. He's got four wives, but the first wife, you know, there's there's some insider truths about this, but there's discussions my wife and I have had about that. She she got catfished. She was talking with somebody online who made themselves out to be a dude. Ended up being a woman who she physically had a friendship with the woman, but still at the same time thought that this woman was friends with the guy she was talking to online. Where I'm going with this is you don't never know when you're dating with today's technology what you're getting. Yeah, especially so, online. And like I said, this makes now, it harder with this nowadays, social distancing exactly. and everything being shut well, down. I wouldn't say it's making it harder. No, but it's I, what, harder. What I would say is it's making it a little different to get to know somebody because you're still going to be standoffish or you're going to be leery about somebody until you get to know them. Just like with um, the news or something, if you don't back up or fact check what's going on, you don't know what the truth is. And that's how dating is. But if you don't get a chance to meet somebody and meet them face to face, you don't know it, what it is. And that's what I'm saying. And, and now you you don't have the option in the country or you do. Anchorage. You, you don't have the option to really meet them at like a restaurant where you're yes, in public. That and is true. You got the protection of the public around you or meet them in a bar. The public in a place, public yes. place. And, I mean, and I agree now with that. you got to start meeting in places I, where you're one on one. You can't meet them one on one. But this is where technology comes in. Who, who says you can't Skype with somebody or Zoom with somebody or FaceTime or any of that. You're not going to get the same readings. Trust me. I could be Fabio online. But that's what I'm saying. When you I s- ain't Fabio in real life, but I could be Fabio online. <laughs> we talked about that previously. <laughs> Usually when you meet somebody, it doesn't matter if you're dating them or not. You, you get a good reading about the person for the first, you know, 10 or 15 seconds that you meet them and you're talking to them. Just like in the traditional days, a good stiff handshake meant a whole lot. Exactly. Just, just like yep. my word is my bond, right? Yeah. Well, when you're dating, you still can read somebody and usually your first instinct is correct. If you ask my wife, she'd say that's false advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say... 24 years later, we are still together. (laughs) What I'm getting at is, because of this social distancing, you cannot go meet them. Unless you're going grocery shopping and you shop together, you you happen to run into each other. Yeah. (laughs) You can meet them face to face. You know, I don't know what that that app was, but you you see their picture and you swipe them left if you like them or right or if you don't like them. You You actually know how these sites work? uh, You know, you hear stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I told you, I, I just celebrated my four-year anniversary. Uh-oh. Are we going through this again? Oh, is that mama calling again? All right, we will be right back. All right, so we got interrupted again by the wife, but that was Imagine like... Imagine that. That was like perfect timing because I had just said I celebrated my four-year anniversary. We were talking about the dating. And I was going into, I just celebrated my four-year anniversary. I have not thought about dating in over five years because Shannon and I have been together five years. I was going to say, if you haven't thought about dating in five years, you've been together for five years. Yeah, so <laughs> you look like you were thinking. <laughs> so that's where I was at. I just remembered that swiping left and swiping right. I think it was called Tinder. That was one that I never I never did. I, well, I, you knowing about swiping left and swiping right. I'm just wondering what's, what's swipe left, what's swipe I, right. I, I can't tell you which one's which. If you like somebody, you swipe it one way. If you like them, don't like them, you swipe it the other way. I don't know which one was which. I can't tell you that because, like I said, I did not do that, that dating app. But what we were getting at was with the technology today and our social distancing, we cannot meet up with people if we were dating. It makes it a lot harder, definitely. My thought is that these dating apps are, or 
or however people are dating nowadays is online. You know, you got Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever other video programs there are. If you got somebody on the video, just the other side of them, you just, you know, you can get the same feeling, not not the exact feeling, but you can get the same feeling as if you were to meet them at the bar or meet them at a restaurant or something, you know, like normal dating is. But this is where we're at today. Yeah, but I still believe that the one-on-one and when you meet somebody and you really face them, because people act different when well, they're face-to-face with people. You're, you're right. I could be Superman online, trust me. I, I tell you everything, and, shoot, what you want to hear, I don't, girl. I don't think I disagreed with you because... I mean, we talked about the catfishing. We talked about this and that. Your initial feeling about somebody is your gut feeling, and you usually can read somebody right off the bat. And I agree with that. But you can portray a whole different aspect of yourself online than what you truly are. Yes, you can. These video conferencing or whatever you call them, apps that you can do will help with that. I think that's going to help. But now here's the deal. You know, I sit and talk with Rhonda. I don't, I don't, you weren't on the mic or you weren't in the headphones, but I talked with Rhonda about it. And so Rhonda has some ideas about it. And, and I think we should go into that. We should let my conversation with Rhonda happen. So we, you know, we talk a little bit more about it. All right. Let's it's, hear what my wife has to say about all this. All right. We'll be back. So the first thing that's going to happen is how... Are people going to date with social distancing going on? You know, you get online already and you go and meet them and whatnot. But, you know, now you're scared to do that. But so now how are you going to date? So you just date online. Swiping left or swiping right. Right. And you get to talk to them online and you get to make a phone call, a real phone call. Like (laughs) that's, that's how we used to date, right? Right. So then you have, then you have, if you're already dating and you're already in a relationship and you're already living together, you're going to have all this baby boom going on because you ain't doing nothing but that. (laughs) You're just getting it on. Nine months from now, we're going to see a surge in births. Baby booms. Yeah, we're going to have another baby boom. Yep. And, um, what do you think about this? Like one of the topics we discussed earlier was having zoom meetings and FaceTimes and Skype. I wish I would have invested in zoom a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, But but dating shit's going up because dating that way. Um, I don't think that, I mean, dating is you're going to meet someone and you're going to talk online and you're going to talk over the phone and you're going to see whether or not you want to meet them. And I think you're still going to date, um, outside of that alone, you're not going out to bars. You're not going to a restaurant. You're going to have to be really creative, but then you're the people who are dating and who are together. They're going to have these babies nine months from now, but the people who are married, and been with these people and have had a life for a long time, we're going to see an increase in divorce. And that's my specialty. (laughs) You're going to work for your money. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like all these people who think that, oh, well, it wasn't so bad before, but now that I'm with them all the time, I I got to get out of here. It's time to go. I just so, think myself, real quick, is that all these people that now they're going to be funny because I mean it's got to be intimidating now. You you're meeting people online, and now you don't have a public place to go meet people at where you're in public and it's a safe, neutral situation. You know, you got to be careful, I guess, because now there could be the crazies out there, and then now you're having to meet in more of a private area. And now all the people who are married are going to be like, why do we have a gun in the house? (laughs) Not in my house. (laughs) That ain't going to happen at my house. (laughs) No. It's dangerous. All I can say say is that I am glad that if I got to be stuck in a house with somebody, it's a woman that I've been with for 23 years. 23? 95. Has it been 23 years? 24 God, years. Yeah. I'm, yeah, 90, 24 96, years. 24 so years. 
she hasn't shot me yet, so and the guns have been in the house, so I, I feel it pretty safe. It might be safe. time because I, I, I can't <laughs> get a distance. I can't get distance from him, so it might be time. Yeah, I don't have that problem. I'm not the reason why I have the guns in my house. The majority of the guns are because of my wife. All I can say, they come to try to steal our TP, they get in trouble. <laughs> They're going to be wiping more than... Uh, ever, too. Why, why are people... Ste- why are they hoarding toilet paper? Well, yeah. yeah. Desperate, funny. desperate times make people desperate I, and crazy. I think that, you There's know, that word again, crazy. Since Home Depot is open, we should all just go get bidets, and that solves the whole problem, doesn't it? Can't well, you... wait a minute, wait a minute. I can save some money. I can uh, I can run a garden hose up there, and then you just say when you're done, and I'll... Can you put a massager on it? Cause... <laughs> they have... They have uh, hey, there's different dials. The, oh, that, that's a, uh, you can go to a shower. You got to get the shower here. Pulsating. <laughs> you got to get the pulsating <laughs> one, because I'm not, I don't want just the straight garden hose. <laughs> All right, that was my conversation with Rhonda. Rhonda is very opinionated about things. And like she said, if this is all over within nine months, we may have a baby boom. baby boom. And we may have divorces. But that's where that sits. I think we've got a lot to learn about each other once we try to get back to normal. And that's where that sits. So how do you feel about that? It's definitely going to be interesting to see where we go from this stage, you know. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a whole different world. It, it, it is. It is going to be for the Our, for the next couple of years. It's going to be a different world. Getting back to normal is not going to be normal for us. I, that's yeah. the way I feel. Yeah. There's going to be a new normal. Yes, it's going to all be a new normal. This so, is thrown everybody into a curve we have never experienced. Yes. We haven't before. had we haven't had this type of issue in our country, and and I can't say the world, but in our country, the last time we had something like this was 1918. So that's 102 years ago. That's I don't the, know if I would go. I mean, at this extent, it's yes, been but, that but long. That's, but that's hey, not been that's not been back. in any of our eras. But let's go back to the 80s when HIV came out. That sent America. It it into sent the a, world a crazy. It sent the world into a loop. It but did. I'm just saying, the way we're having to deal with things right now, we haven't seen any kind of pandemic like this. But since, HIV sent yes, us you're, into a you're different. You're absolutely right. And it like we overcame that, and we we still haven't. But you know, we're still having. To, there there is still HIV, and oh, there's yeah, still AIDS. There's still out but, there, but we have treatments. We've for learned it now. Yes, but what and, I'm saying is, we haven't had a pandemic at this level since 1918. AIDS AIDS was one. Thing, but we have not seen this since I don't 1918. Know. I think AIDS scared me more than I, this. <laughs> if you compare it that way, yes, I I'm scared. I, I would be bad. scared more about AIDS and HIV. HIV than, was a than scary I would thing. This. To but, me, to but me. at the same time, if I was 70 years old and getting towards the end of my days, I would be more scared of this than I would of AIDS and HIV. Yeah, that's 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 all I'm saying. But I yeah, want to move on. HIV, you had to play. <laughs> you had to be a player. <laughs> Oh, I got and some stories about that. More, right? more times than not, you had to be a player to get the HIV. But uh, So, with all that being said, I think we should move on. Let's get on to the next subject. And you're the one that brought this up because we were talking about Ozzy Os- one of Ozzy Osbourne's guitar players. Hey, I just think us being guitar players, I just think back about some of the influences I had when I was growing up that I really enjoyed their guitar playing. I got to say, I got to send a shout out first to uh, Pete Palmieri. Pete, I knew you were going there. That taught me how to play guitar. It was a great story. You know, and and I don't know when the last time you and him have been in contact. I've been excited (laughs) every time you talk about him, but maybe, maybe one day we can just get him on here for a couple minutes. I hope that we could do that. I would love to put I, Pete on here. I hope I that mean, we could do that. I'd be afraid of some of the stories he would tell because well, we had some wild that's, parties. That's, <laughs> that's the good thing about editing. We, we, could, we could edit some of this bullshit out. Like I said, you know, I don't know when the last time you talked to him and how much you've been in contact with him, but I would be happy and, and I would enjoy having him on this podcast. Yeah, I would love to have him also. But uh, I sit there and I think back about my days 
since becoming a guitar player to learn to play the guitar and what got you into playing you guitar know, i mean of course being a kiss fan i always loved ace fraley and uh i think he's a great guitar player but i gotta say in my era you know i mean there were some good guitar players great guitar players but, before time but, but but who was your most influential guitar player jake e lee jake e lee played for ozzy osbourne after i think he was incredible he was the, he was the guitar player that came in after Zach Wild. No, he came in after Randy Rhodes. Oh, sorry. Yep, you're right. I was thinking Zach Wild. Randy Wilde, Rhodes after, after Randy had Rhodes passed away, and Jake E. Lee came in, and Jake E. Lee is just incredible. With some of the work he put together was incredible. I mean, it, I mean to try to duplicate what he did today and do it accurately is. I, I tough. remember. I remember something you told me about him, and I don't remember the song. You'll have to remind me of the song, but you were telling me that there was one of them songs where he was playing and he picked his fingers or something up off of the fretboard and he put them up above the nut and he started squeezing on the, getting the harmonics or something out of the, the little bitty of the string between the nut and the tuning pegs. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that he did, like I said, back in the day, this there, is back before Yngwie Malmsteen, this is back before Steve Vai, Jakey e. Lee was doing stuff on the guitar that was unheard of So and he was a great guitar player. So Jakey e. Lee was besides Ace Fraley was one of your most influential guitar players that Absolutely. got you into Absolutely. loving guitar and playing guitar the way you do. And I tell you what, I sit here today and I wish that I could play like him. I, you know, <laughs> I, I try. I, I gotta I, say, I practice songs I, that I, he did, and I still can't do it. But I, I gotta say that I don't have one specific influential person because when I started playing guitar, it was because I had just came out of band and I was playing the baritone did you have braces no oh i was just checking uh -huh. <laughs> one time nope. at band camp yeah there was there was no band camp in my past so i had just come out of in fifth or sixth grade i was playing the baritone but i felt and i still remember to this day feeling like i was being pressured into what i was going to play for band because i wanted to play the saxophone <laughs> yeah I, I wanted to play the sax okay hey what nothing, was they hey hey nothing wrong with playing the sax but you you kind of you kind of gurgled or puked in your mouth or something so i want to know no, what, I what was your thought kind of chuckled because i'm just not seeing you as a sax player you, you're not seeing me long-winded no Really? <laughs> no. We're we're on a podcast and you don't see me long winded. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave that one alone. So we'll stop. Well, now. okay. So continue on. When, when I went into when I went into what instrument when I wanted to play, I'm pretty sure it was fifth grade, fifth and sixth grade in New Mexico. I went in and I wanted to play the sax, but I don't know who the guy was, but he kept saying, "You got long arms. You need to be playing the trombone." I said, "I don't want to play the trombone. I want to play the saxophone." So all that said and done, sixth grade, fifth and sixth grade came out. I went into seventh grade play the trombone no no <laughs> i started playing the guitar oh. but i didn't have any influences i just you know i just thought the guitar was a cool instrument it fit me better so like waylon in his song says i've been playing since i was 14 well i technically i've been playing since i was 13 now have i been playing good yeah maybe in the last few years i've gotten better because i've been out of practice but well, the guitar became good but <laughs> The guitar You're playing better. The guitar has become my go-to instrument. And as I sit here today talking about our guitar player influences, we have a good time playing, don't we? We do, and I got to say we need to do it some more sitting out by Absolutely. that fire pit and playing Exactly. You know, that's how Eric and I started playing guitar together was sitting out at the That's been that's my That's my Epiphone. That's that's been my guitar, my my instrument go-to for right now. And, and ultimately since I've been 13, I like I said I I'm out I've been out of practice for so many years actually i think it was eighth grade so yeah 13 you know how to play guitar who do you like i will have to tell you i don't have any specific and, and this is where i was going with that i got into high school i thought i was an intermediate because i'd already taken guitar class but he said no you're a beginner so my my freshman year i was a beginner my sophomore year, I was in intermediate. And this is where I'm going with that. I feel like I want to be Sam Kennison right now. <laughs> say it! Say it! So say as, it! <laughs> as an intermediate, 
I learned how to start finger picking as as I was learning more of the guitar. Yes, the bond. That's where I'm going with that because some of my <laughs> one of my favorite finger pick. I've got three songs that I play finger picking style. Esteban plays it, Malaganya, and it's there. I mean, it's a technical song, but I play a little bit of it and I enjoy it. The next song is Kansas, Just in the Wind. I can play a little of that pretty good. The other one is Stairway to Heaven, and I know everybody. That's that that is the free bird of playing the guitar is Stairway to Heaven. But getting back to that, Esteban is one of my influences because I love the mariachi and Mexican style of finger picking guitar player. So Esteban, he's phenomenal. If you were to put these two guys into a similar category to Jakey e. Lee, I would have to say Keith Urban and Brad Paisley play the guitar. They would be some influences on me and, and the way I would love to play the guitar. Man, <laughs> took a while to get there, but I Because you kept say, interrupting me. I I got to say that I enjoy Keith Urban and Brad Paisley. They both play great guitar, but I'm sorry. Myself, Jake Ely was the man. I, I'm, he, not, I'm not comparing them in the same... He set the stage. I'm, I'm not. I'm not comparing it. Now, Now, here's the other thing, too. I'm not putting either one of them in the same league as Jake Ely because they are from different types of genres. But... And I, that's what makes it difficult. You know, I mean, it you is. look it's, at great guitar players. Everybody's you, great in a genre. You and I are not musician experts. We are not. No. But we still love our music. We do. And we have our own ideas of it and and i think i think you put jakey lee on the country genre he would have to learn it but he would still be just as good as keith urban and brad paisley and vice versa i agree jakey lee can play anything now here's 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 some local some local influences that i want to bring up Merle. Merle. I Merle miss you, Merle. Kid. I love Merle Kid. So, I, I mean, I, before we go any further, I wanna, enjoyed that. Before we go any further, I want to tell you a little bit of story of Merle. That Merle stuff you, Merle used to do that listening to Billy Dean. Remember we talked about last episode, we talked about the live, the live concerts that these musicians and stuff are putting on. I've been listening to Billy Dean. One of the things that Billy Dean brought up in one of the live concerts that I just listened to Friday last week. Billy Dean says, you know, when everybody's becoming a musician, and they would, if they were singing Willie, they would pitch that all. They would sound like Willie singing. Oh, oh my. Yes. And that was one of the things that Merle used to do. And as soon as Billy Dean said that, I thought of Merle that minute. Merle is a fabulous guitar player. And I think he used uh, to play I love a Fender. Merle. I think he played a Fender Strat. I, it's either Fender Strat or a Telly, but I can't remember. Merle, I love you and I miss you. You're one of my favorite guitar players and everybody makes some fucking noise out there like Merle say. Yeah, that's right. But fucking Arizona's loving Merle. Merle down there now. Yeah, you know where you know where he's at. He's, he's in, in Tucson. He's in Casa Grande. Well, right there, at which Tucson. is where Larry and Carol are. Yeah. Anyways, so getting back on subject. Love be, you, Merle. Love you, Merle. Miss you. Miss you. Love you and miss you. We got to try to put you on here live one of these yes. nights. So getting back to local, he's not here anymore, but our other buddy is, and they both have played with Ken. And I'm talking about Zach Roberts, Goldfish, yes, and Zach. Casey Smyers. Those two guys. For, for knowing knowing what those did those guys have done growing up playing guitar Zach does not have the background that Casey does Casey went no. to school for music Zach, Zach didn't Zach. pick up the guitar until he was like 16 and he was in the band six months later in a bar exactly <laughs> well maybe he wasn't 16 but my buddy Zach Goldfish used to play with Ken the way he plays the guitar makes me want to keep going and, and learn and Some same with Casey people have that natural talent although and although I have to say one I got to say it Miss Scott and I on that natural talent, but we're trying. I have I have a gripe when I talk about Casey. I have a gripe. And Casey, you better better learn this. No. Casey, when Ken has you playing Rick Springfield, Jesse's girl, and some other stuff, you gotta learn how to play Kiss. Yes. You've got to learn how to yes. play. I can play it. I can, you know, if Ken starts doing that, I'll come grab your guitar and I'll play the Kiss. But I want you to learn because Eric Eric can play Cold Gin. Hey. I can play Detroit Rock City, the solo, a little bit of it. I'm not saying good, but I think if the both of us can do it, I'm pretty sure you can do it, KC. Come on. You kill me, man. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh, yeah. You come on, brother. 
Burton. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, those are some of our musical guitar playing influences, and I absolutely love it. My brother played the piano, and then he learned how to play the guitar. I wish I would have learned to play the piano. That is one instrument and, that I love. Yeah, and so, I wish so, I would have learned so to play Kevin it. played the piano. He took piano classes from the actually the same teacher that taught me how to play the guitar in high school. And then Kevin learned harmonica from our late step grandfather, my stepmom's dad. So Kevin played the guitar. I mean, the piano and then the harmonica, but then he learned how to play the guitar, but he plays that damn guitar like it's a ukulele and he needs to stop. We are a musical family. We got a whole lot of stuff going. Hey, I learned how to play the recorder. I you learned the recorder, you man. Like, you like having a plastic <laughs> in your mouth? Hey, what? Did I say that out loud? Oh, you're going to definitely have to bleep that out. <laughs> no, but definitely love playing the guitar. I'm going to grab a, a blues harp and I'm going to start learning how to play a blues harp. I'm hoping that we can convince Kenny to one of these nights, <laughs> let <laughs> us join go. him on stage and play a song live. That's one of my bucket lists things is to get to join Ken Peltier on stage and play a song and him sing. Did I already sing a song with you? You shut okay. up. Okay. You, <laughs> you were hey, hey. Singing and playing is different. We're, we're playing guitar. We're not singing. I don't want to hear about that again. <laughs> um, Playtime's over. <laughs> flip a coin. <laughs> flip a coin. Cause but I, I would love to, I would love you're, to you're get absolutely up on right. stage and be able to play guitar and jam and let Kenny sing. Because I, I love Kenny's I, voice. I, Kenny I, has got a great voice and I... I want to be able to play with yep. him one time. Well, just one hey, time. How about this? He's already got the band. I know he's how got about, the band. How about we get him in here and sit him down and we play on this podcast? Uh, because here's here's why I'm going that way. Because I guarantee I will f- it up if I get up on stage and everybody's looking at me. Well, then you set your guitar down and uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me play. Don't ruin my dream. <laughs> well, you're Don't not, ruin my you're, dream. You weren't going to play the song I was going to play, were you? I, I'll play, that's what I'm saying. What song are we going to jam together? And boom, let's get it together. And I love this bar. Oh, you're an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you just want to sing about how Eric sleeps out in your car. Which I don't own no more, just so you know. I don't own it. That's right. I don't <laughs> sleep in your car anymore. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, we we have we have some I, you know we we started this as guitar influences, but we have some musical influence. Ken and Merle have a lot of history together, and we love you both. You guys have been some good friends to us over the past, and 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 influences on us. Yes, but uh, you know we we want to be able to keep all of this local, support your local music. Yeah, Merle lives in Arizona now, but he's still a phenomenal guitar player. But we hope that maybe we can get you both on this show. Is it a show? Do we call it a show? Or is it just call us it's babbling? Our podcast, we, we called baby. it babbling it's the other day. Show. Yeah, it's our show, but we I, we're, we're babbling. We, we just get our hey. we just get our good old buddies on. With- Exactly. We need to get Merle on the phone one yeah. of these nights. Ho- hopefully we, we can do it. that one day. We and, need to uh, get it together. We'll get Merle on the phone. We'll drink some Jack or maybe something a little stronger when Merle's here. Merle's oh, on. No. But, uh, we, we definitely going to have Jack. Raise some hell with Merle. That would be some great times. So. Anyhow. I've got great memories of <laughs> times with Merle. Oh. I mean, he's always created a great memory. And, and i got great memories when I'm been out with Ken. Great times. Yep. Great times. Yeah, we've had some good times with those boys. As for now, up in one podcast, we're going to turn off the lights and close the door on episode number four. What do you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to take some classes on uh, impersonations. This is Scott and Eric coming at you from the Chugach Foothills in Anchorage, Alaska. Had a great time and look forward to doing it again, people. All right. All right, I'll work on the next one. (laughs) Until next time, we'll see you then.